Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at creating a data moshing effect in Touch Designer. Uh, this effect is inspired by a tutorial from Neuro Tipeek. Tip uh, sorry, I, I can't pronounce the name. Um, they had a really, really great tutorial um, on data, data moshing, um, which uh, introduced me to the idea of bringing this into Touch Designer. Uh, but their tutorial used a thing called optical flow and that is not available on say Mac devices and some other devices. Um, so I wanted to create my own version uh, which will work natively on any uh, touch designer, um, one that doesn't have optical flow or does have optical flow. Um, to this video, sorry, this project file as it is, is available for download in the link below on my Patreon, just a few bucks and you get access to this file as it is, um, as well as every other file that I upload um, and do a tutorial on. But yeah, so today we're just gonna go ahead and um, start this from scratch. I have a reference file to my side, but I'm also gonna keep this one up top um, just because uh, this tutorial has been done very um, last minute, uh, but hopefully I can also explore some of the concepts of how this is all being put together and why it works um, without optical flow using a similar technique from another tutorial of mine. But yeah, so firstly we need two videos. Um, now this can be any two videos of your s of, that you like. Um, some videos will work better than others. I think particularly for the ones you want to data mosh um, against, so the the displaced layer, um, ones with movement and bold outlines works and looks the best. Um, but you can also customize the components that we build to you know, work in any sort of way with that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and we'll leave the top layer for now and we're just going to go ahead and do everything we need to do to the um, bottom layer. So the first thing is an optional fit. Now uh, the reason why you might want to create this fit is if we grab a info chop um, from the top layer and drag it on like so. We can also set the scope to just be the file resolution and file uh, res x and res y. Um, you might want to use this to apply to a fit. Um, so what we can do is click the fit and go to the common tab, click plus, and these are now draggable and we can drag them on and apply them like so by clicking and chop reference. Now these are the two same uh, aspect ratios and uh, thus this is kind of an unnecessary step but might be useful. Um, and you might also want to set the fit best to like fill outside or something that will automatically work, uh, which means then you can like save this as a component um, and do what I've done here and have like in and then have the component be used in other project files and it will also automatically update your videos to work with whatever sources you have. So that's just sort of an optional recommended step. And yeah, if you want to also connect in um, an in like so, uh, just so you can use it as an external component, you totally can. And let's do that anyway. Um, so this will, uh, we can have our default videos like so, but if we plug anything into the parent, um, into the new ones we've just created, this will override the original input and use whatever we plug into our parent instead. Sweet. All right, so moving on to the bones and the juice of how this all works, which is with a cache. Now, if you remember from my uh, tutorial where we did liquid displacement with a webcam, um, we can actually use a cache to pick up on movement inside of an image, um, which is essentially how we're gonna apply, apply our um, data moshing effect. Now, optical flow does this anyway, um, but like I said, not accessible to everyone. So we're gonna create our own sort of faux version of it. So with the cache size, we can bring this down to a small number like five, as we only need just a few frames of difference between the original image and the output of one. Um, so we don't need anything bigger than five in this case. And now if we grab a cache select um, top and we drag the cache on like so, we can now set this to be negative five. Now you might wanna play with this um, to your own liking, 
but essentially this video is going to be five frames behind this one um, and then when we interpolate or combine these in real time using a difference so we'll grab a composite um, and then set the operation to the difference so let's do difference like so like so you can really see we get this optical flow style effect or style of displacement which is picking out the differences between these two videos which are only a few frames apart um, you can even make it more precise as well um, but you can see as we're only one frame behind the difference is going to be really really small so it, it really depends on um your video but i found five is a good number for most sort of videos if that makes sense um, and just to give you a little demonstration if i give optical flow up oh, i don't think this will have the right viewer um but yeah this this is obviously calculated with a lot more precision um but it essentially does the same sort of effect uh yeah let's keep pushing on next we have a level the point of this level is to take our optical flow and essentially just highlight the parts we want to highlight like make it more impactful um, i've found what works nice is bringing the contrast up a little bit so I, the number exact number doesn't matter i've just brought it up a tiny bit from one you can see now we get these really bold red and green outlines which we're using for our displace later on i'll explain that when we get to that um, but again this is the situation where you want to sort of adjust this to your liking so if you are using two very specific videos this is a great opportunity for you to come back maybe once you've done and adjust this level to make the data moshing look as nice as you want it however um, like i said i originally built this component to be used across multiple projects so the numbers i pick are going to be sort of what i've found to work best across a variety of sources uh, next in the network you can see here that i have a threshold but i'm not actually using that so we can skip past that one and then it gets plugged into the displace so we need to bring um we need to catch our top layer up to speed so what we do is we connect in a feedback and essentially we're going to be creating a feedback loop um, with the displaced optical layer that we place in and that's going to be repeatedly added on which is going to give us that data moshed effect as the new layer alters um, the pixels of the original layer coming back off this feedback um, in my a network up the top i have a noise um, this noise is turned off because um, it's sort of just a stylization effect if you want to add more grit and grain to the image um, but we're going to skip that for now what we are going to do is go ahead and grab a displace like so um, off of this displace before i connect these networks in i will just complete the loop um, we have a level again this is simply another um, optional step um, a, a, this is actually a lot simpler of effect than i think people realize um, but i have a lot of these sort of like optional effects to help bring in any sort of refinement to the look that you might want uh, from this level i then have a composite and like any sort of good feedback loop we need to connect um, the pre-feedback in so we can connect that one in like so and let's make sure we have this one um, set to in this case maximum again another situation where i found playing around with the different combinations um, can give you nice looks but in this case i found maximum looks the best across multiple video sources the next thing i have in uh, is a little bit peculiar uh, which is an rgb key and now the reason i have this is because sometimes with the displacement um, depending on your video and what it is a bit of transparency might be introduced um, not necessarily like parts of the image that are cut out but like um, some of the background might become slightly opaque uh, so adding in the rgb key just applies a black background which will help fill in those opaque layers again not necessary you might even want to work with transparency so you might want to skip this step um, if you know what you're doing otherwise i think it's a good safe thing to have just enabled finally we have another level again this level is um, 
in my case up top not doing anything at this current point in time uh, because it is a stylization option we have a null which if you want you can name VG for background and you can enable it uh, and then I had a out because again I wanted to use this as a component and when we have an out essentially when we then scroll out um, it gives us the video output like so cool so now to combine our displacement um, I actually for this <laughs> displace level really like to keep the extend to hold um, that's a bit of a optional um, look you can see uh, here with these lines that are being dragged across this is what the hold effect will create if I instead set this to uh, repeat or mirror and then if we um, let this play out uh, you can see the image doesn't get stretched as much and it repeats the image on the displaced layers um, so this hold is really really up to you in terms of stylization but I, I found it's the, the, the best look in my opinion um, so we can plug this level from the second one uh, second input into our displaced like so we want to make sure um, the displace weight is set to a small number um, in this case I dragged it down until I think it was like I think I did one negative 1 1.4 in this case um, it really depends on where you want you can also change the offset as well if you want uh, but other than that I kept most of the same um, and I'm just gonna pause the recording and double check something real quick awesome so the thing I was just double checking was the displaced sources um, red and blue which we have set on default uh, with our optical flow you can see um, here the the points of difference are highlighted with red and green um, horizontal and vertical displacements um, and it's also because of the original like image has a lot of red and green essentially depending on the type of data moshing you might want to change these horizontal and vertical sources to red and green um, but this is going to be not only video dependent but also intensity dependent for this situation I'm just going to keep it set to red and blue um, so it doesn't create too intense of an effect um, and I now need to complete the feedback loop um, so from this background uh, like so just dragging this up so it's a little bit more obvious we want to drag this onto our feedback like so uh, this is another opportunity here with this level where you could actually set the opacity to be slightly point less than one um, and then with this feedback as well let's go ahead and grab a keyboard in um, and then apply this to the reset button like so um, which will just pulse the reset every time we want to do it and I'm just gonna double check once again I haven't missed a step sorry uh, sorry I, I did make a mistake um, this is <laughs> the many one of the many side effects of uh, someone quickly requesting a video on this and me being like okay yes I will do it quickly um, I tried to adjust the offset values earlier on the displace layer so we clicked on the displace right now um, I actually meant to do it on the source midpoint not the offset I got these values confused um, but we want to bring our source midpoint actually down to zero um, on both of these uh, just so it's back in the middle and reset to one and then the displace layer gets carried across um, and now um, if we bring our background I've just pressed one you can sort of see the data moshing effect starting to occur and we've attached this feedback to be one so when every time I press one it will uh, change now um, in my external use of this tool I actually mapped audio to this and made the kick trigger the feedback like that which I feel like was a really cool effect that might be up to um, you on whether or not you want to do that uh, but just before we finish off the video I'm just giving you guys some more creative options so this level um, again if we enable this and then bring the opacity slightly down you can see it will create not a permanent data mosh effect but like sort of just a temporary moshed layer overlook um, with the original image still peeping through which you might like you might not like 
Uh, we also have, again, our level here. Um, if you want to play around with the brightness, you can see if we bring that right up, the intensity of the effect is, is much stronger. Uh, same with the contrast. Playing around with those sort of different layers. Additionally, going into the displace and changing the source to red and green, you can see now that we're using red and green and doing the horizontal and vertical displacement, it is um, obscuring the image in a much more intense way. Uh, in this situation, I feel like this video, it made the outlines less obvious um, as to what I was actually displacing, so I opted to keep it as red-blue. Yeah, and then beyond that, of course, you have typical level um, for more uh, post-processing. You might want to even actually set this level to be uh, after the feedback loop, like so, and then we can just do simple like brightness controls, black level, and so on and so forth. Um, RGB key, uh, again, if you this image has no transparency in it, so this essentially does nothing, but if you have transparency, like so, we have the cache select again, once again, let's bring this down a little bit and then reset this. You can see the uh, difference is not as strong and the data moshing takes a second to apply, but it is very video dependent. But essentially that's it. <laughs> essentially, this is the whole effect and we can even trim it down um, to just, like if we really, really wanted to, the whole effect is just this few nodes. What is that? That's uh, five, eight, nine, 10, 11 nodes. One of them is an output, so not really necessary. 10 nodes is all that is really needed to create this effect. But hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, a like, subscribe, and all of that is greatly appreciated. Um, please, if you can afford it, uh, my Patreon is just a few bucks a month and you get access to all of my project files that I upload on YouTube as well as some extra ones. Um, if you use this effect at all, please uh, tag me. I really, really want to see you guys' creations on TikTok and Insta and all that. I, I use all those different platforms under different names. Um, so I'll find your content <laughs> and just tag me or mention me or at me or whatever it is. Uh, and yeah, I, I look forward to seeing what you guys create with this data moshing effects. And especially when you just leave it running, it really creates some cool looking stuff. So um, thank you so much and see you next time.